Hello and welcome to everybody out there. Today's session at Bar Chart is a special webinar and my name is Jean Baker. Jean Baker. <laughs> I am really happy to have everybody online with us today. As you know, the team here at Bar Chart, we're committed to providing our users with the best financial website available. And along with that, we also want to be a resource for you when it comes to education and to giving you tools that can help you navigate today's financial markets. So it really is a special pleasure to introduce you to today's guest presenter, John Rowland. John, hi, are, we, are you out there? Hey, Gene, how's it going? Great, great. Great to have you online, John. So let me tell our users a little bit about you. John is a financial markets educational consultant, and he's got lots of years of knowledge about the futures industry, risk management, and many other trading concepts. Uh, John, you started your career, I believe, as a floor broker, and you've worked as a natural gas and energy specialist for many years. And most recently, John was an instructor for Online Trading Academy, presenting educational sessions for users, much like all of you that are sitting in on this webinar today. So please help me welcome John to this bar chart webinar. And with that, I'm gonna turn everything over to you, John. Well, thank you, Gene. I'm really excited to be here today. Uh, a great opportunity for me to uh, present some of my uh, years of experience to your subscribers and uh, I always like to make the joke that uh, you know uh, I have been around for a long time and I know my way around the block and I have a good idea where all the good parking is too as well. <laughs> well great. <laughs> so um, there we go. Uh, did you want to uh, talk about this for a second? Or? Oh, yeah, sure. So as with all of our other bar chart webinars, uh, I do want to point out that uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of investment decisions and about trading in today's session. So uh, any decision you make to buy, sell, or hold or trade securities, commodities, or other investments does involve risk, sometimes substantial risk, and uh, we are really presenting this material to you just as informational material and educational material. And you do really have to consider uh, whether trading is suitable for you in light of your financial condition. So um, with that, go ahead, John, and you can proceed with the topic of the day. Well, thank you, Gene. So I want to talk about the commitment to traders report. Um, at, for um, uh, some way to anal analyze our markets. I think it's one of the most uh, underutilized uh, tools in a trader's toolbox among uh, uh, traders. Um, and it's what makes it an interesting uh, analysis. It's a blend of both financial, uh, excuse me, uh, fu fundamental analysis as well as technical analysis. So um, as Gene says, we'll probably go a little quick in the beginning here. I want to build a base or a foundation of some knowledge for you guys. Um, and uh, then we'll get more into the meat and potatoes. So before we jump into the, di into the deep end, I want you to understand a concept called open interest. Now, open interest is um, uh, two components of uh, a term called liquidity. Um, open interest represents the total number of futures contracts held by a market participant at the end of that trading day. So what we're really talking about is somebody who has opened a position, has put money to risk, and has committed money uh, to the markets. Um, when we talk about open positions, uh, that means that somebody has uh, been become either long or short the market and that uh, they have yet to close that position with an offsetting transaction. So what we need to do is to talk about this concept here for a moment. Um, when we look at open interests, it takes two parties to create open interests. In other words, uh, we have a buyer and a seller that is inside of one open interest. Now, if I put an order in with a broker or if I put an order in with my in my platform, 
uh, and where I'm a willing buyer or I'm a willing seller, I'm not creating open interest. That is just called an open order. Not until when I get a fill or when my order is executed will I um, create uh, open interest. So volume is the record of these transactions and open interest is the result. So what, what are we gonna do with open interest? Well, when we look at open interest, it's, it's often used as an indicator to give us uh, market sediment or when we start talking about price movement, our trends, right? The strength behind our trends. So if we have large rising open interest or and we look at our price action, this is a um, tendency to see a strengthening trend. If we see falling open interest and we look at our price action, either going up or down, this is a sign of a weakening trend. So uh, rising open interest, strengthening trend. Now, uh, for my junior traders or first time uh, viewers here, I don't want you to, you to assume or get confused that a rising open interest and a strengthening trend is only associated with an uptrend. Uh, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, we could see rising open interest and falling prices, and that would be a strengthening trend. The other concept that we'll keep in mind is when we start looking at our market participants, um, this rising open interest, we might see a key um, component or trader in our price action whose open interest is actually opposite of our price action. In other words, let's say we have a trend that is strengthening on rising prices, but we might be looking at a participant who is actually increasing their open interest by selling more and more contracts. So rising uh, their open interest. So we could see that um, play out in a market. And so we'll look at an example of that one uh, a little bit later. But what if I told you that not only could I give you a report that tells you if open interest has been rising or falling, but inside that report, uh, it would actually lay out who was buying and who was selling. Well, that report is our commitment of traders report. And the commitment of traders report is provided to us by the uh, Commodities Futures Trading Commission, the CFTC. This is the regulatory or the governing body of all uh, commodity, excuse me, all futures, U.S. futures. Uh, um, and it breaks down uh, open interest in terms of position types and market participants. The different types of positions we can talk about are longs and shorts. Long meaning that I bought into the market, short meaning I sold into the market, and spreads. Now, for this discussion, we're not gonna talk about spreads. We're not gonna go into that. Um, a spread trader is somebody who is both long and short at the same time. I know for some of you, you might say, oh, how can I be long and short at the same time? That would be a neutral position. But these traders are spread over multiple months or multiple contracts. So they might buy uh, in the agriculture market. You, for instance, in the soybean world, we might buy uh, the November contract and sell the, the um, uh, July contract. Our market participants are our commercials and non-commercials. So when we look at those players, our commercials represent our hedgers, those companies or traders that actually deal in our commodity or our financial instruments. And their main purpose for using uh, futures contracts is to lay risk off in order to help facilitate their economic activity. In other words, they wanna lock in prices. They wanna guarantee prices of either their input costs or their uh, profit margins. Commercial traders are exempt from position limits. Now we'll, we'll discuss this a little bit later in, uh, in some examples. Non-commercials or speculators, uh, their main purpose for using uh, futures contracts is to take risk on, uh, to 
profit from price movements, right? Uh, large speculative traders are required to report to the CFTC. Um, and our non-commercials or our speculators are subject to position limits. And this could uh, be significant to us when we look at tendencies and probabilities. So there are several types of commitment traders reports that we'll need to uh, understand and look at in our analysis. The first one we're going to talk about is called the legacy report. Now, a legacy report breaks down by the particular exchanges and the report can either be futures only or it could be a combination of futures and options. Now our legacy report uh, breaks down our open interest into two classifications, our commercials and our non-commercials, two large uh, buckets, uh, filters so to speak. Um, the legacy report is a nice report for us because it gives us a quick snapshot or an overview of our markets. And we can look at the legacy report to say, help us to identify maybe a market that uh, we want to go deeper into or look at uh, greater depth of information. Um, so it's a, kind of a big picture uh, a report. What the CFTC does is it takes the legacy report and then creates a a more complex or detailed reports. And one of the ones that we're going to concentrate a little bit more on is called the disaggregated reports. Now the disaggregated report takes that uh, legacy report and breaks it down now by asset classes in our futures, our agricultures, our energies, our metals, just to give you a couple examples, and all other physical uh, contracts, physical markets, uh, commonly referred to as commodities. So desegregated reports will be looking at our commodity markets, right? And these reports, again, could be futures or a combination of futures and options. A desegregated report uh, breaks down our commercials and non-commercials now into these subclasses. We have uh, producers, merchants, processors, and users for one. And this would be our commercial traders. These are the traders who are in the know of these markets. In other words, uh, I like to call them my makers and takers, those who are making those commodities um, and those who are taking them and using them or processing them. Uh, we have swap dealers. Uh, swap dealers would be uh, could represent both um, uh, some commercial uh, traders and uh, some speculative traders, but they will fall under the commercial category as far as the CFTC is concerned. Money managers would be our speculators, our non-commercials, and um, uh, other reportables. Well, that's kind of a catch-all category. So the question now uh, you, some of you might be asking is, is there one group of traders that we should be focusing on or does any particular trader have a greater influence on our market or market prices? So the takeaway I want you to get from this whole process that we're gonna look at is, what is the role these groups have in uh, determining our prices? What is the role these groups have in determining our trends? And what probabilities and what tendencies um, will occur when they are more active, when they are adding to their positions opening open interest or closing open interest. So what are these tendencies that we can see in our markets as these traders become more active? So if we think about commercials, right, our pro producers, processors, merchants, and users, these traders are in that business. They know those, those, those markets and they're well aware of when prices are relatively cheap or relatively low and they know when prices are relatively high or expensive so their tendency is when prices get low they tend to be buyers and when prices tend to be high they tend to be sellers because they know those markets so when we look at our open interest of these traders if we see them buying and we can look at a chart and see our chart has come from 
high to low, this could be a signal to us that prices are about to change or that we have found uh, a near-term bottom and vice versa. Prices have, ex have expanded to the upside and we see that our uh, commercial traders are now adding to a short position. They're kind of telling us now that we've reached the upper range of price. So our commercials kind of define price in terms of a range, high and low. Think about it in terms of like wholesale and retail, full uh, retail prices. You know, a good example would be, you know, you, you go to the grocery store and uh, you walk in and you see that a gallon of milk costs a dollar and you know you buy groceries every week or every other week and you know that a dollar a gallon for milk is a really good price it's a super low price and at that moment you would say well you know i buy i'd buy as much milk as i thought i could drink in that week but what if you could say oh i want to buy that price but i want that price for the next six weeks or the next six months well this is what our commercials are telling us when they are more active they are using futures markets to lock in these low prices or higher prices. Our non-commercials or our speculative traders are, are really kind of our trend traders. They tend to ride the trends. They tend to go with the flow, so to speak. Um, now, they don't not, not necessarily drive our trends. Uh, you, I will show you an example of where we see our commercials are behind driving a trend. And if we see a market like that, well, we should take notice of that. But for the most part, when we talk about speculators, we're talking about those who are pushing our prices from the low uh, to the high or from the high to the low, riding that wave of our trend. So as we dissect our probabilities, we, we know that speculators could be more involved in moving our trends along. So how can we apply the commitment traders to our analysis? So I wanna talk about these probabilities as they unfold before I give you some real world examples. So we're gonna look for discrepancies between our large traders, our large commercials and our large um, non-commercials or speculative traders. And we want to know if they have a historically high long position or a historically high short position. And this is a tendency in the markets where we could see a potential change in trend that we've reached the extremes of price movement. Um, but let me take a time out here for a second. When we look at the Commitment Traders Report and the numbers that are uh, reported to us, in, especially in our charts, and we'll look at this in a few minutes, a long position is reported by a positive number and a short position is reported by a negative number. So if I buy 10 contracts, my open interest would be reported as a 10 or a positive 10. If I sell 10 contracts, then my position would be reported as a negative 10. So if I'm talking about high short positions, what I'm really talking about when we look at our charts is a large negative number. So we wanna to look to see if we have a historical high uh, long positions or historical high short positions. We also want to start concentrating on looking for inflection points where we see our large traders are increasing or decreasing their open interest or where they have changed from a long position to a short position or from a short position to a long position. This is an indication that we could be seeing the beginnings of a new trend as they add uh, to this open interest or they start to decrease uh, or close their open interests. Uh, we want to discover what groups of traders are leading our trends and this is really that concept of you know the flow of money, flow of money into a market and flow of monies out of the market. You know, market sector rotations is very common um, in the equities markets, but in the futures markets, we can think about who is driving our trend and who is supporting that trend, and is this new money that's coming in or is it old money that is coming out? 
this will be important for helping us decide if this is the smart money, maybe our commercials, or the speculative money, um, our non-commercials. And finally, the last one is what I uh, pointed out, is we're going to look at open interest as it relates to positions. But now, because we have the commitment of traders report, we're going to look at the positions of these larger traders. And with rising open interest, we have a tendency of seeing strengthening trends and falling open interest, we see tendencies of weakening trends. So I want to take you guys to, I want to give you an example. So here's the CFTC, and for those of us who want to know where this is, this is the CFTC.gov. Maybe, Gene, you could type that into the, um, sure. mm -hmm. into the box for me. Um, and this is our Commodities Futures Commission trading. And we go under market data, and we see commitment of traders. And here's that introduction or that methodology of how they report it was created. There's our types of reports, legacies, a supplemental report. We're not going to talk about supplemental reports, but there's our disaggregated report our, for our commodities. And then for financial futures, our uh, stock indexes, our um, interest rates, and our um, currency futures or Forex futures, uh, we have a report, a, the, the disaggregated report for those markets, which is called traders in financial futures or sometimes referred to as the TIFF, the T-I-F-F. -F. Here you can find uh, how the uh, CFTC uh, defines these different groups and there's some um, explanations there for you, a little bit deeper explanations. Uh, long and short reports. The long and short of long and short reports is that a short report is just a week to week and a long report is just has a little bit more detail. I think what's more important for us here is this pause is look at is the release of schedules, how, when the report is released to us, and we can see that they actually give you uh, the specific date. So we can see that in June here, the next report will come out on the 26th, Friday. And if we look at the header up here, we see that the Commitment Traders Reports is released at 3.30 Eastern Time. And it is collected or is the data is from the previous uh, Tuesday. In other words, the report comes out on Friday, but it's uh, where our traders stand, where their positions are at the close of business on Tuesday. So here's the caveat that we need to understand with the commitment of traders report. Because it's based on data that was created from the previous week and it's not released to us until Friday at 3.30 Eastern time, this is not a tool of timing. We're not going to use this for the timing. It's really help us to find where prices have come from and who's been driving it and, and what tendencies or probabilities could be a follow from that. And the, our time frame analysis here, we're going to have to stay uh, in that weekly or above time frame analysis. So it's not a great tool for somebody who is going to be a day trader or, or intraday uh, trader. But it could give you a slant or a bias to a longer term trend. And when I think about uh, trend analysis, I certainly would like uh, to find trends that last for a longer period of time. And when I look at weekly trends and the probabilities that the commitment of traders will play out for us, we will see that these trends uh, not necessarily end after one week or two weeks. They tend to carry on for multiple weeks, multiple months, and sometimes as, as much as uh, a year. So let's go back. Did you have a question, Gene? I'm sorry. Yeah, I've got a, a few people asking some questions like, are, are these reports delayed then? So, yes, they, they are delayed. Uh, 
it's weekly data and it's reported by the CFTC by 3.30 p.m. Eastern on Friday. That's and, correct. And for bar chart users, uh, when we see the reports on the bar chart website, which John's gonna show you shortly, uh, we usually get the data sometime after the CFTC has posted this. So by 3.45, 4 p.m. Eastern on Friday, the data should yeah. be updated on our website. I will, I'll show that in uh, in our bar chart. I think it's about a 30 minute delay before you get the update right. from the CFTC until it hits your um, um, website. So I've gone to the disaggregated report. I've gone to the sh the, the short report, and you can see here uh, this is the report that is given us to by the CFTC. Here's our producers, merchants, processors, our swap dealers, money managers, and other reportables. And it's by futures market, wheat, soft red winter wheat, and Chicago Board of Trade. And it's telling us if they're long or short, or if they're spreading. So this is a kind of complicated um, report. And you've got to almost be a statistician uh, to uh, read this report. So this is a little bit difficult report uh, for, uh, for, for most folks to use. So that's what's great about bar chart is now we can go to bar chart here and um, take a look at our commitment of traders. Bar chart condenses that information for us and it makes it very uh, palatable for us uh, to use. So I'm gonna go to futures and I'm gonna go under the commitment of traders report. Now, on this page, this first page here, Commitment of Traders Report, there's a couple things going on here. First, basically, this page is kind of our nomenclature or our definition page. There's our definition of open interest, uh, what is a reportable position, our commercials, non-commercials, non-reportables, what is a producer, merchant, what is a swap dealer, what is a money manager, and then there's our TIF, our TFF and their classifications, dealers, intermediaries, say that three times, <laughs> asset managers, <laughs> uh, leverage funds, and other reportables. So we can go into the details of that if we wanted to. The other thing nice about this first page is I could click on any market, um, let's say I'm gonna pick corn, and it's gonna take us right to um, uh, this, uh, page, which is what we call our flip charts or our quick charts. And we can quickly scroll through uh, a multiple of markets in a very short period of time. Again, we're going to take that moment in time to look at the big picture and then maybe break it down into the little picture. We'll go into a little bit more detail in a second here. Um, but see how I can change uh, right here by going to the different markets. And if you know what markets uh, their code symbol is, their root symbol, uh, for instance, CL would be crude oil. I could go quickly right to crude oil. Now, let me go back to bar chart. And here's our legacy reports, all right? Again, there's that, that big picture of legacy reports. Um, and here we can see under our legacy, remember, is it's those two buckets, uh, the large uh, commercial traders, our hedgers, and our large speculators. So we're looking only at two groups here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my large hedgers and my large speculators, and we're gonna look at that, those, those probabilities we were talking about uh, when we have large open interests, right? And so we can see that in the corn market, we have a colored box here where it represents a 52 week high. In other words, a high in this terms, a positive number means a 52 week length position, long position. And so our commercial traders in corn now have a long position of 197,560. This represents the largest long position they have had in the last 52 weeks. We also could look, quickly look at markets where we see a large low 
number. And I can come down here and I see under the uh, crude oil, the WTI contract, that our commercial hedgers are short uh, 608,563 contracts. But this is the largest short position they have had in a 52-week period. This is telling us that our commercial traders are telling us that their prices are probably high and that's because they are more actively short and in the corn it's probably telling us that prices are uh, too low not necessarily but uh, we could look at those markets the other probability that we said we want to start looking for is when our traders go from a positive position to a negative position or long to short or short to long and notice that bar chart makes that easy for us as well here it says the prior period the value was negative in other words the prior period they were short and now they are long and so here we see that example here in the hard red wheat the prior period they had a negative position short and now they have a positive position again they've gone from short to long they've added contracts could be beginning of a new trend could be the beginning of a strengthening trend but it's something significant for us to look for um, an example of a period that went from negative to positive well that would be down here in cotton i'd have to go back one more let's see if we can find another example here we go here we were positive and then we went negative right so we would look around this time in our charts to see what was going on in our markets now again with uh the legacy report if i want to look at a lot of markets in a very short period of time and i'm want to digest this material I can go to my flip charts right my quick charts and uh, quickly move through all these markets now just to reiterate what I had spoken to you about before down here we do see our commitment of traders report and notice that we do have our large two groups are commercials and non-commercials we do have small speculators that are also reported but um, you can see that over history our small, small speculators really don't have much effect on our markets but we do see this discrepancy between our commercials and non-commercials where their positions get wide and if we look at what is going on in our prices you can see a lot of times when our prices get our excuse me our positions get uh, to the extremes this is usually a time when prices start to change uh, direction now this is what we call a technical chart it's a static chart once the chart is created we can't manipulate it we can't change it uh, the only way i can change uh, the inputs on my technical chart is i could go to what is called my cot chart here and here is our chart here is our, our analysis and down below there is where I can set the defaults for my chart. I could uh, change the style of the chart. Candlesticks, I know a lot of uh, traders are fans of candlesticks. I can turn volume on or off. Um, I could change the way my uh, scale is. I can look at uh, different periods of times, day trading, uh, day uh, continuous charts, weeklies, monthly charts, and I can look at uh, smaller or greater periods of uh, history. Um, I can actually refine it down to a very short period of time. Maybe you're a seasonal trader and you wanted to see just what happened in certain certain seasons, and here we can. Uh, go in and look at all the different kinds of technical analysis that is available to us and we do see here uh, our commitment of traders um, our financial uh, traders and our disaggregated uh, report so we could add those uh, to um, our analysis now once I've set my defaults as I want for this particular chart then I can save it as a template 
Now, John, ahead, let me, I, I'm just going to um, make a note here that a lot of these things that John's talking about, you know, saving templates, and uh, I know you're going to be showing people how to um, possibly put trend lines and such on an interactive chart. These things are uh, tools that are available to bar chart members and you can sign up for a free account. Uh, I'll be covering that at the very end of the, uh, the presentation. And actually looking at some of the uh, detailed data on the, uh, the COT reports that John was just showing you, um, that also will require a free membership at the very least uh, in order for you to download the data. If you want to download a uh, comma-separated value file for Excel spreadsheets and so on. So I'll cover that at the very end, but I just wanted to point that out quickly. Sorry to interrupt you, John. No, no problem, Gene. I appreciate it. That, that's great information for us. Um, so again, we could save our template and we could name it. And I have a commitment to traders templates here. Um, and I also have volume attached to this. And let's say I don't want to see volume. I could come back down here again and I could turn off my volume and redraw my chart. And now I'm just looking at the commitment to traders report. Now let's go back to our legacy for a second here. And We have our corn, and I, before I move away from here, I do want to make this note we talked about in this big picture of the two buckets. Our corn traders are long, our commercial traders are long, 197,556. So let's keep that in mind uh, as we go to our desegregated report. So remember, we, now what we're doing now, we're breaking down our legacy now into a smaller categories and those categories are our processors, our merchants, uh, producers, and users, our makers and takers, our swap dealers, our money managers, and our other reportables. So we are in the commercial, you know, those are in the know. And we do see that in the corn market now that we see a historically 52 week high, but the high here is only 29,777 contracts. The legacy report is showing us 197,000, but the uh, disaggregate report is only showing us 29,000 uh, that is associated with uh, these commercial traders. So where is the other 165 or 70,000 contracts? Well, we said that our swap dealers also fall under that commercial category. And there we see that our swap dealers now have represents uh, that 167,000. That gets us to that number that we saw before. So what I think is more important for us to look here, again, these tendencies and um, uh, probabilities is his, here we see our swap dealers in the corn market is, um, they have consistently held about the same same um, position where when we looked at our producers, merchants and processors, uh, we can see that they have been gone from a short position uh, to a long position, a significantly uh, long position. So this is critical for us. This is telling us a, a very interesting story. So Gene pointed out to us that we could go to our different markets in terms of our technical charts, but one of the other charts we could use is what we call our interactive chart. So if I typed in uh, CZC, which is our corn, notice that bar chart will bring up um, all the different futures markets that we could look at that are related to that symbol. And now I'm in what is called an interactive chart. And an interactive chart is a chart that we can manipulate, we can change, we can do uh, things to it. And this will help us do our um, uh, risk assessments as far as looking for opportunities to trade. So again, once I've saved my templates, give it a second to load.
Now we see uh, my two templates here is I have my commitment of traders, my legacy report, my LC, and my commitment of traders, my DAG or my disaggregated, all right? Again, here we see um, our legacies. We see a rising long open interest that is reflective of our commercial traders, right? Almost, uh, we said it was around almost 200,000 contracts just below at 197 and we see at the same time our speculators are adding to a short position so both of them are adding to their positions and this is a sign of a strengthening trend and we can see that price action during this period was rallying or and it was in an uptrend so who was driving our trend well our commercials were driving our trend and i think that might be a very significant story matter of fact if we look at history here we can see that for the corn market this is the first time we have seen our commercials traders have had a major long position now sometimes they have pop above uh, this zero number, a positive number, just tells us they're long. But this is the largest long position they've had in the last three years. As a matter of fact, I think if we go back uh, to five years, we'll see that that plays out as well. So what is that telling us? Well, we said that our commercials tend to buy when prices are cheap. And so what really the market is telling us here, based on the commitment of traders report and what our commercials are doing, is they're kind of telling us that corn prices are relatively cheap. Meanwhile, our speculators here are trying to predict or say that prices are gonna go lower. They are taking a short position. The other thing we said we wanted to start thinking about is this inflection when we go from a neutral position where we start adding to a position or where we go from a short position. Notice that our commercials back in January had, were net short 127,000 contracts and then they started becoming uh, a long position. And during that time, prices started to bottom out. At the same time, our speculators were long and then went short. So a change in uh, positions, that is definitely a crucial point for us to start investigating uh, price action. Now, if I wanna manipulate this chart, I want to uh, play with it. Up here are my tools. One of the tools I like to do is I like to draw little trend lines, right? And right click on my trend line and there we can set our defaults, we can show prices, we can show percentage change, we can show how many bars are in our chart. Uh, we don't have to show anything if we don't want to. Uh, we can extend our lines out or we can show uh, with an arrow. And we can see that uh, during this last period of time where we see rising open interest, we do see a strengthening trend. Now, what has happened since the last report? Well, during the last report, we did see that open interest kind of fell. Well, we saw that in our legacy report. And so falling open interest is telling us that our trend is now weakened. So we could still see this market continue to go up, but at the sh in the short term here, it's telling us that our uptrend has been weakened somewhat. Now, if we see an increase of open interest in the following uh, report, then that could uh, be the catalyst that continues this trend. But at this moment in time, uh, our trend is probably paused uh, until we see uh, a change, a new inflection, or one of these larger traders uh, add or subtract from their positions. Now, one of the things I can do with my disaggregated or my legacy report is if I right click on those, and here I have set them at the medium, but you know, like I said, the other reportables and our swap dealers tend to be, we'll take them out of the picture. Uh, I can apply that. And now you can see that I'm only really focusing on my uh, commercials and my speculators, my hedgers and my speculators. So I can make those changes as well. 
So one of the things I did, go ahead, Jean. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. So a lot of questions popping up here. And uh, there's a common question that I keep on seeing of, of the commercials and speculators. Is there a group that is statistically more accurate? No, that's a great question. I think uh, I, I, I'd have to say that in the long run, who would you think would be more accurate? Those who are speculating or those who are in the business? Well, if you were to ask me, uh, probably those in the business. I would agree with you, too. I yeah. think <laughs> in a statistic, we would discover, uh, and I don't have that statistic, but from experience, usually our commercials are have a higher uh, probability of being right. Now, there are moments in time, and I will get it, hopefully I'll get to it in the next 10 minutes, is an opportunity to look at where we would see the smart money is actually was wrong and uh, created a great uh, price uh, 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 upheaval, so to speak. Okay, All right, so thanks. what I did for, for you guys is I created some charts uh, a few weeks ago using my um, interactive charts. Um, and just to show you, this is no David Copperfield trick here. It is interactive chart, and this was created on Monday, June 8th. So we have now two reports, uh, two weeks from when this chart was uh, created. And uh, again, I want to just reemphasize these tendencies that I want to start looking for when I use my commitment to traders report. So here's an excellent example of rising open interest as a reflection of this flow of money. Who's driving our trend, right? Who's committing money to risk, both on the long side and on the short side, right? So this is our gold market. And here we can see that we have a major uptrend and we if we go back in time, this is where our speculators went from a relatively neutral position, zero, and had some incremental increases in uh, their open interest. So their flow of money into the gold market, um, speculative, right? Uh, so here would be an example where our speculators were right. They were driving prices. They were driving our trends. And we do see that reflective uh, in our price movement. Now, what we do see also is that when their open interest reached a limit or a plateau, remember, speculators have position limits, so did our prices. Our prices plateaued. They can't add to their position. They can't put more money into the market. And so that would have been a cautionary tale for us that maybe prices have stalled for the short term. And then we see that their open interest kind of fell a little bit and then it accelerated again, which helped push prices up. Now, I wanted to also point out some potential probabilities uh, moving forward. And, you know, I kind of had to take a shot here. Uh, um, when this chart was created, you know, three weeks ago or two weeks ago, you know, prices were on the low end of this sideways action, right? A weakening trend on falling open interest. And you can see that our speculators open interest was decreasing. So this uptrend had now become weakened. Now, I wasn't predicting that the trend was going to become a downtrend, but certainly we did see a trend change. And that change in trend in this case was a sideways action. Now, we'll go to a live market in a second and see what's playing out. But also, this is where I was talking about increasing open interest uh, for some of our large players who um, are taking the position opposite of our trends. And we can see rising open interest here, short open interest by our uh, producers and speculators. OK. So let's go quickly to the live market. And I'll change that to gold. And again, we have our prices today. This is for this week. And we do see that prices have popped out of this range. So when I did this chart last week, we were down here. We were kind of range bound. We hadn't gotten broken out to the downside. But now we've popped out of this range uh, on a weekly basis. 
What I want to see now is, do I believe in this new resurgence of this trend? So what do I want to see? I want to see an uptick um, in our open interest of our trend followers. In other words, our, in our desegregated part here are um, speculators. So what I want to see on this Friday is during this week, did this price action, which is now has happened since Monday, uh, was that an increase of open interest as we see an inflow of new money? If I don't see that, then this might be just a technical range of price. What I really want to see is that open interest of my speculative traders increasing. And I probably want to see a major increase because we can see over historically, right, we can see historically their open interest is relatively low compared to where they have been uh, in, in the past. So we probably want to see a major uptick in open interest. Here's that example of our corn trade. Notice that our producers' commercials position changes went from a net short to neutral, and then neutral in the last few weeks uh, to a, a large positive. At the same time, our money managers, our speculators' positions moved from neutral uh, to short. So this is kind of what Gene was ask, asking. Uh, again, an indication that our probability that our trend is a change and who is the smart money. So in this case, Gene, who was the smart money? Well, that's the uh, the smart people. <laughs> yeah, the commercials. Very good, Gene. Very good. I didn't mean to do that to you. But. No, no, that's quite all right. I'm reading through lots of questions coming in from readers here. So, uh, yeah, this is good stuff. Lots of questions. Um, I may as well ask you then. So Go in ahead. general, here, here's one question. Uh, is there a way for you to identify the trend before it starts so that you can initiate a position? So again, this is yeah, not a waiting, timing. Right, since we're waiting a week for the COT data, is there anything that you look for on the chart? Well, we, 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 we could also look at open interest, right? And so the COT data is a breakdown of our open interest. So we could go to, uh, I mean, this is a great question. And I didn't plan on talking about this, but I think it's a great question. So we can go to the individual exchanges and look at, individual markets and for instance we could let's go right to metals right and that would be okay. a great uh, um, opportunity and here's our gold yeah it's funny somebody was asking if you were going to go through a metals example <laughs> this is great i'm trying to trying to get an example of, <laughs> of a couple of markets here we are bumping up against our hour time frame so but so i've gone to the gold markets i've gone to what is called the settlements page and the settlement page will tell us um an estimated volume and um our previous prior days open interest now this is the preliminary for today so we could look at tuesday's final and we could look at our volume, an increase in volume is definitely something I'm gonna look for, but did my open interest increase from the previous day? So I can see that my total open interest on Tuesday was 522,000. So I need a reference, right? So I need to go back one more day, look at Monday's final, and see that our open interest from the previous day was 516,000. So Tuesday's, Monday's, Tuesday's price action was on an increase of open interest. What we will then, then do is wait for the commitment of traders report to come out on Friday to say, okay, we see a rise in open interest, but who was behind that rise in open interest? And if we see in the case of gold, that rise in open interest was based on speculative or our money managers, that could give us that indication that this trend is about to start. Now, if I'm just gonna use the commitment of traders report, I'm gonna wait for that um, uh, longer period of time to play out, but here's where you could be a little bit more proactive. So I hope that quest answers that question that your, um, listener 
ass. And um, if if I could, I know we're we, we're bumping up against our hour time, but you you were looking at that data, and I want to show people where you can see that right on barchart.com. So, John, over in the left menu under technicals, you've got a price history. Uh, keep on going, keep on going, uh, keep on going, uh, right there, there, yes. So you don't even have to leave the bar chart website. You can uh, look at daily prices with the open interest directly. Very good. Awesome, Gene. I, I learn something every day. That's great. <laughs> That's good. Awesome. Thanks. Excellent. Great. Um, what I did want to show is, um, and I'm going to bump right up against that hour, Gene, so I'll give you that five no minutes. No worries. No worries. Um, so I've gone to my tools here and I do have my chart and this is really what I want to show you the power of the commitment of traders report and I can I can save charts again this is my uh, interactive chart and you know here's my trend line uh, again what I'm pointing out here is here's that surge in open interest by our speculators and you can see that at the time when that surge came prices were kind of range bound and that that was the catalyst that allowed prices to break out above that 1348.40 area and that this trend you know this is what is powerful about the commitment of traders they are increasing their open interest for multiple weeks in this case 14 weeks that's what this number represents 14 weeks and that our price went from 1348 to 1567 so that is an increase of price of $219. That's the price of the ounce per gold. But if you understand the leverage of a futures market and how a gold contract is uh, priced for every $1 in a change of price of the ounce of gold uh, increases the uh, contract by $100. So we can see that in this 14 week period that a one lot contract in, in gold would have returned a profit of $21,900. That's a nice profit, right? Yeah, it sure uh, we'll is. Have to talk, yeah, we'll have to talk about other things, you know, margin and stuff like that. But in this scenario, this would have been a really nice set return. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to capture all $21,000, but I would hope that for most of our listeners here, if I see this powerful trend, that I could capture a piece of this, and I'm certainly I could find opportunities to go long uh, over a 14-week period. So the final one I wanted to show you is didn't get a chance to go into the TIF reports, but this is our TIF for um, uh, our ES, our S&P Mini. And again, remember this was back in June before we actually expired the June contract. But here we see historical long positions was held by our, uh, our, our asset managers. And matter of fact, if we looked at this, this is when the market made its all time highs and this was the all time highest open interest that we have ever seen by our leverage um, uh, asset managers. And that would have been an indication to us that maybe the market had gotten a little frothy or a little bit uh, too ahead of itself. And then prices uh, fell. Now, it's easy hindsight 2020. This is a uh, was a rela uh, reaction of the COVID, right? But let's look at that date. Right, that was around February, right? Um, and then again, if I went to my bar chart, which is really great about doing this for us, go to my uh, now I'm going to go to my financial one. Here's my asset manager, so I have to change that. And if I go back to February of, let's see, indexes. One more. 
and there we see that they had over a million one hundred thousand contracts. That was on February 18th. By February 25th, they had liquidated almost three thousand three hundred thousand contracts. Now I know COVID uh, really started to be in the front pages, really more in the month of March. Here would have given you that timing a little bit better time. Said, hey, market's a little bit frothy, and all of a sudden we see that we have a decrease of open interest of three hundred thousand where we had maintaining a million contracts and that would be a sign that our trend was about to change or that prices were going to uh, maybe fall. Um, at the same time, while well, I'm here, and if I go back in time, now I'm using looking at my dealers, intermediaries, these are kind of our smart money, those two Wall Streeters, you can see that on March 17th, they had the largest open interest that they've had in the 52 week, but here we see that they had the largest short position that they had had. That could have been an indication to us that prices have stopped going down. Right, and you can see that over that period of time, the next couple of periods, that their open interest continued to go back towards neutral or zero. And not only that, but as of June second, they have the highest, lowest short position. In other words, the range of price, right? The range of price. So if we go back to our example, and then I'll let it go from here, Gene, is. Um, here we see our historical long position. Potential trend is over. Market falls out of bed. Our smart money now is selling as the prices is falling, adding to their position. And then all of a sudden what we see is this, this trend that we have seen in the stock market over the last six or eight weeks, right, has come on the back of this smart money, not putting money into the market as some people would uh, predict, but actually taking money out. In other words, taking shorts off. And how does a short cover his position? Well, they buy the market. So this rally, this trend has come on weakness and not on strength. So if I was a stock trader, this might be an indication for me that prices are about to change or that this trend in order for it to continue to move forward needs to see new money come in and needs to see maybe our asset manager starting to commit to the market. And if we look at current market conditions, And we, we're not going to look at our legacies or our commitment at DAGs. We're going to look at our templates of financial traders, right? And so what we see is actually um, that this could be that indication of our trend is now over and for this week in prices, certainly our trend has stopped going up, maybe turned sideways. And this could be a cautionary trail tale for us that maybe the market is due for a slight correction. Um, now I'm not making that prediction, but certainly my commitment of traders, my TFF and my charts are all telling me the same story. So uh, to sum up, Commitment to Traders Report is not a timing tool. Uh, it really gives us an insight of who is driving our prices, what's important for us, who are the players, and what is their role in terms of prices. Commercials tend to be more active of highs and lows in the markets. and 
speculators tend to be more active with our trends. When they have large positions, this is usually an indication that the market is vulnerable to a change in directions. As they add to the positions, this is a sign of a strengthening trend. And when they decrease their positions, this is a sign of uh, a weakened trend. So I want to thank Jean uh, for this opportunity to present this material. Uh, I want to give a shout out to her staff, especially Colleen, for doing a great job on my uh, slides. Um, and I want to thank everyone who's in the room for spending this hour plus with us. Uh, I appreciate your time. And I hope that I've raised the bar on your education. Well, thank you, John, very much. Uh, you've presented with us with a lot of very valuable educational material about how to use the data that we're seeing, how to analyze it in the trading, and uh, We've got lots of questions still coming in, and I'm sorry if we haven't been able to get to every single one of you. I do want to say that we've got a great support team. So if either John or I privately is in, in the chat window has, if we have not answered your question, uh, please just email support at barchart.com. Uh, they will be help, helpful in setting up your chart templates or answering any other specific questions that you have. Uh, John's got a screen up here. I did mention that a lot of the things that he spoke about, like creating chart templates or putting trend lines and having the chart save them, are part of a membership. All you have to do is click that sign up button in the upper right hand corner of the website. We have a basic free membership. Just give us your email address. We create an account for you, and then you can start saving all of your, uh, your annotations and markings on your COT charts. We also have a Bar Chart Premier membership, which will give you a whole lot more information. Uh, you can actually get uh, lots of historical data downloads and uh, additional premium benefits from that. We offer a free 30-day trial. So sign up. And uh, thank you again, everybody, for your attention. And uh, you stay safe, stay healthy. And we hope to see you in another session soon. Bye now.